today we are installing perspective mode on my already I already have live scope already on my boat but I think I want a second transducer so we're gonna do a whole video on how to basically install the perspective mode as well there's probably not that much difference the only thing is is we are gonna have two transducers somewhere on the shaft of this of this motor so I came down here to Jones Marine Electronics with my man Michael Yoder what's up guys we are uh it's early it's early <laughs> it's early <laughs> so we got i got tournaments going on um i leave straight from here and there's uh what'd you have rick clunning here yesterday rick clunning here yesterday trey mckinney drove all night he's sleeping and out in the parking lot yeah he's in the sleeping. parking lot sleeping when i got here it was dark we uh, had uh, lee livesey the day before we got him finished up and ready it's just that time of year when all the pros, you know, unfortunately, the way the boating business is, they get their boats a little late right before season. And uh, it's been a race. We've been up here from 7 o'clock to 9, 9.30 every night getting everybody ready. My boy Castle Knight here, he got to have another doucher. He's got so many fish down there. He, he needs two doucers to keep up with all of them. I, I'll, I'll say this. I'll give, I'll make another video on why I need two transducers. It's it's a common sense thing. I'm not saying everyone needs one. Two reasons. One main one. One, one main one. I'll explain that later. But for right now, we're going to get right into it. He, he's unhooking my, my units right now. I don't know what he's going to do. But we're going to sit here and film it all. Just like I, my, my last videos I've done of installing the trolling motor, installing live scope, rigging out the entire boat. We're going to get into all that. We're going to film it all. Try to go over every single step and hopefully he's pretty quick. I don't know, Taylor, Taylor's really good. We're gonna see how good Michael Yoder does on camera and or installing this thing because I don't know if he can do better than Taylor, but we're gonna find out. Oh man, bear me to Taylor. Somebody's gotta teach them kids how to do this. I don't stuff. know, man. Taylor's done a pretty good job. We'll see. Always remember comment, question. If you see anything you don't understand, put it on there and we'll, uh, we'll try to answer those questions. All right, guys. Oh crap, I can't have that on. Like, we just, like, it wasn't on there two minutes. I'm like, well, Taylor did the other one, so he did a great job. We'll see if Yoder actually knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was just roughing in until you got here, boss, you know? <laughs> so, is, are y'all gonna, gonna take this off? Yeah. Okay. Hey, dude, adjust and adapt and roll with it. Don't, don't get, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> you, you, uh, you won't have to fight the offset anymore. If we yeah. Do what offset? See, he's, he's like me, he ain't never noticed it. <laughs> like when you when you line up on a fish and you throw, like say dead calm day, and you're watching your bait go down and it starts to fade a little bit, and you have to like bump your you know, steering just a little bit and it brightens back up. And it's because the transducer sits like this on that mount. It doesn't sit straight up and down. So it doesn't reach straight to the water, it reaches the water like that. So if you throw and you hit the surface here and you see it, by the time it gets down to 25 foot, it's actually not even the beam anymore. It's over here. That's where it needs to be. Okay. Hey, you see this back? So it's going to be better than this? Yeah. You see this back? So we're going to do away with this mount, correct? Yeah. yeah. And what are we going to put on there? We're going to do two fish obsessed mounts. We'll explain all the benefits once we get them on here. Okay. Just a second. So today we're putting that in another Deucer Live Scope 34 system to Todd's boat. We're gonna do two fish obsessed mounts. We're gonna get into the reason why once we get those mounted up. We got the front pulled, we can get down in there. I'm fixing to mount his other box right over here beside his other one. And I'm gonna put my fish tapes through and get ready to pull Taylor some wires once he gets this second deucer mounted up. Mount the transducer first, then pull the wires? Yeah, we always start at the bottom. You always start from your deucer and up. If you go ahead and run your wire now, you'll never get this and all the slack, and you got to run it through a, a channel over here. So it's got to go through that and then go back to here in and order to be right. And on that skeeter, so I have mine right there. Where are we going to put? Um, we're the black probably, box? without messing with this right here, I'm probably going to put his second black box just right here facing forward with the wires. I, I don't use that much, so I don't care if you... Okay. It doesn't bother me, uh, me personally. If I take this out, I'd probably rather have that box right here, out of the way and everything. But okay. you really don't run a lot of stuff over here anyway. 
So it being right here facing forward is not going to hurt either way. No, I have some bike. I just don't want, like, what can harm it? <clears throat> Are they pretty indestructible? They're pretty indestructible, and I'd say what would harm it the most is if you filled this thing completely up and just stack stuff on top oh, of why? it. Junior or jackets and yeah. so forth. As long, you can throw some stuff, a, a throw cushion, or if a jacket's loosely in here over it, it's fine, but if you pack stuff down over it and it can't breathe in July, you might overheat the place. Okay, okay. So, and I know you guys fish well, Texas. Well, it's not that. I just don't, like, I don't know that that would harm it. So, okay, um, perfect. As far as damaging the wires, dude, we run them up here. Or I just don't, like, way. run in. I was more worried about running in, like, rough water and, like, one of my, so I keep that one box and I didn't want a box hitting it constantly yeah, and stuff yeah. like is that gonna if i put it in the bottom your wires are going to be tucked up here facing forward. and so it's good nothing's ever going to hit it i'll keep that people, i'll keep that throw cushion right there a lot of people run the throw cushion up here in this compartment and what we tell them to do is just stick it right there you're good to go perfect that's what i'll do yeah and even though your throw cushion's over it it's not packed in tight it still breathes yeah so still okay breathes. All right, what we got here is a lot of times they we just weren't talking, I just filmed stuff, you know, like next steps. There's not really any important steps here and there's no real tips from Taylor. I, I, maybe I should make a whole new uh, segment, tips from Taylor. But all he's doing right now is he's putting the live scope, the transducer on the fish obsessed mounts. Uh, the mounts have like four bolts. They're pretty self-explanatory. I mean, if you can see, it's nothing special. He's just adding it on there. I was still showing the, the step. Uh, you can see him, him moving it. He's going to get it in line is what is pretty much what he's trying to do. He's trying to look at it, make sure it's in line, make sure it's level. It's pretty much an eye thing. There's not really like this special thing you need to do. It's pretty much just to look at it. And now there's the second mount. That's the second mount with, that's gonna be the actual perspective mount. Both mounts, you know, are used for live scope and perspective. There's no difference. They both, remember it's the same transducer. It's just pointed a different direction. So he's just adding both of them on there. So what are these now? What do you got going for me? So these are fish obsessed mounts. Um, Who makes them? Fish obsessed. Okay. They're, they're a new company, I guess a year or two ago. I can't remember they exactly when they started. But... Yeah. Are they? They're available. That's what, I mean, I was, that's why I was kind of asking who makes them. Cause yeah. I, I know y'all do some. Them and we, keep, we order five at a time and keep them in stock for all the trolling buyers. Fixing apparently order more than five Fixing because these didn't make today. it a week. Five didn't make a week. We're ordering 10 today. Really? Everybody's okay. getting two up there now. They gotta have two, and it's Taylor will explain it better. But those angles you can get on that, and if you're in a little deeper water, but you want a perspective still, you can angle that thing more down to get, catch that bottom up. Hey, your uh, other scope network's gotta go back here. Network. I oh, know it's gotta go back there. All the way. Yeah. Okay. So this has to get extended. Yeah. All right. You put live scope underneath perspective, correct? Yes. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. yeah, it's mainly a clearance thing. So okay. it's not one works better down there. No, okay. and, and I've, I've done it both ways. They both work. Now that we've been doing a lot more of these with these mounts, I rigged one like this the other day and put it on the water with the guy, and it's worked really well like this. Okay. Crazy so, good picture. Yeah, like the, the perspective was still good. You didn't have to worry about this being below this and maybe blocking some of your view, like right down below the trolling motor. So, but. On this one right here, on this Garmin trolling motor, there's a spacer that I put in right here in the middle, and that's to offset for this big neck they put on the top of this trolling motor and get that transducer down, because if I didn't, it would have to be like up another inch and a half or so. But now that gets it down for more clearance, but it's still not mounted on the barrel down here, so you don't have to worry about knocking it off on rocks as bad or something like that, so. But with these, this is zero degrees shooting forward. So like the stock mount that you get in a box with a live scope is gonna have a eight degree, I believe that's right, eight degree offset kicked out away from the foot of the trolling motor here to miss it for when you got it mounted up on the shaft like how Todd's had his since we did it. And you notice for what, two years now, it hasn't bothered you? 
What? Having that zero de or not having a zero degree. You know. No, I don't even know what that. I mean. That, that's what I'm saying. Like you didn't know. No, you, I don't you even know. Like just fine with like it. Like it's Most, been great. A lot of people, it never bothers. But deeper water fishing, you know, like say 20 plus, following a bait down, tracking it with this mount is going to be a lot better. Just I just kind of assume I'm moving around. Well, and, and that's the thing is like most people that are hardcore scoping are moving a lot anyway. Like, you know, we're talking, you know, throw the trolling motor on high and let's go look for one. So you're always drifting and pushing around with the wind anyway. So you're always having to bump the trolling motor to keep up with your bait. So for people like that, it doesn't bother. But them. I ha like you can power pull down. Like I, I can see now, like since you said it, maybe I notice it. Yeah. No. It, it's it's not ever. Cast. But if you had never told me, yeah. I probably would have never. I just would assume. But yeah. now that you've told me, maybe okay. So with that, that gets rid of that on your forward transducer, and like I said, for clearance, gets it down lower. And then on this one up here for perspective, stock perspective mount is just going to have a certain angle. I don't know the degree down, and that's all you're going to get out of it. You'd have to like reach out here and bend it with your hand or something to try to get a different angle, flatter or further down for deeper water. But with this one. It's just got a little system here where it's got a compression system behind it. And all you gotta do is just pull up on it. And so now you're flatter with your perspective for a certain depth of water. And then you can go down with it. Like this would be more like standard, like what you get out of the box with a Garmin perspective mount. And then you, if you were fishing super deep, you could go even. What's super deep? Like 20, 25, 30? Yeah, I'm gonna say anything over 25. Okay. That you need to go down like to that gotcha. second click. But right. most of the time, that middle click, unless you're fishing super flat water, you know, or flat bottom, that's where you're probably- What if I wanted to go five foot? Yeah, I'd go up yeah. flat. Like, yeah. just go oh, really? Up, yeah, up point, up yeah, point. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go up to there. If like, I want to, like, if I'm more concerned about that here in the near future, because yeah. it's springtime. Exactly, Okay. Yeah. But okay. yeah, that's, that's the benefits of these mounts. The zero degree for your forward, and the adjustability up and down for perspective for different depths. Awesome. And it also allows to keep the, 34 off the foot of the trolling motor, which yeah. we think seems to put a little noise out there with, with having to. Yeah, when, when you have to clamp that one down here, we've seen some noise get introduced to them, and we've seen some that won't calibrate compass if you have, you know, issues with a, the rock and bottom or something like that. That's, and that's some of the stuff Todd and I covered in one of our videos on the water about how to fix that with that compass calibration. And like I say, sometimes when it's down here because of the magnets in here, that doesn't work. So with this, you're keeping it off of it and away from it a little bit, and that should keep a lot of those issues out of it. Man, I don't know about you. I'm so glad Taylor came here this morning and got that Dude. phenomenal job. Dude. I'm just telling you, he brings it. When have I not done a good job for you? Well, I don't know, you just up there, what are you doing? You're just going through my baits and stuff. You got, you know? Well, I mean, really, it's, something's gotta be worth seeing and dealing with you at seven in the morning. That's true. It's always your tackle, Todd. <laughs> not that we're not glad to see you, but it's definitely the tackle. Give me that drill right there if you don't mind. So what are we doing? So with two scopes, the net network cable off your second box has to come back here and network off one of your graphs back here. So we're gonna take this off. I'm gonna access right here and I'm gonna run the network cable back here and hook it up to one of his graphs. Okay. Oh man, my troll motor really looks freaking gaudy now. Not in a bad, I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying that like, you think yours is bad? I look like a scoper, like a like a full like an all out. Before it was kind of just a big uh, just a scope on there. It wasn't no big deal. Yeah, you just look like the average guy. I look like the average guy. Top supply feet. I told one guy, if you don't want to pay it next time you come. I, when I'd go through the video and listen to things, like there would be so many conversations me and Taylor and stuff and Lad. Well, yeah, I mean, how many, how many did we look at that day that that you had already uh, deafened because of all the crap? Oh yeah, I'd have day. to silence him and not Todd, talk over. Todd's showing me this stuff laid back, and he's like, "Yeah, there's a reason why that's not there." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Yeah, just imagine if you ever would have been there." Oh, I know. I'd have less baits. All, all I'm asking. You act like we don't take care of you. I'm just saying. What's the only thing going back there? So we're just doing the uh, network for that second scope box back to the dash because in the way this networking works with four graphs like we've got on here, you've got two ports on each unit. 
So like say this unit up here, you've got a live scope network going into it. Then you've got a jumper that goes from this graph down to the bottom graph. And then the other hole in the bottom graph has a 20 foot cable right here that's going back to the console. And then on the console, 20 footer in one port, and then a jumper going from right to left. So that only open port on the boat is the inside graph back there right now. So we're about to fill that port now. So he'll have all his network ports used up. So that's the way you've got to do it if you're going to run two scopes on a uh, four graph network with a Garmin without adding like a port expander or something like that because you don't need that. And just for y'all that, that are still new to all this, no zip ties. He's he. You can do zip ties here. But the thing is, is they're loose. Like, you know, we're moving cable inside of them. That's that's what we want here. And that's that's what they make these little slots for the side of this mount right here is just for that kind of thing. But like I say, loose. There's one right here just to keep it held up, loose. And then there's one right here, same thing, just to keep it in place, loose. But that's it. Like, see yeah. how, like I can move it. But that's the only zip ties you'll ever see on here. Everything well, else. And then two right here, which I'll And then two we'll, down we'll here, but those. I remember yep. those. Yep. But everything else, anything tight, if you notice, it's all tape. Just straight up black electrical tape. The good kind though. Yeah, the good kind. And the good kind is? The 3M with the yellow inside of the roll. That's the stuff that's gonna to stick to pretty much anything, hot, cold, wet, doesn't matter. All right, I'm showing you this step. The, there are two screws you have to put in at the bottom base of the mount, and they kind of hold these different zip tie loops that that you run the cables through. Pretty simple. This is the homework you gotta do, okay? Do I need to film this or no? No, I'm just taking your net off. Why? Do you want? I want to put your. I thought you said right you're going to put it there. Yeah, but I want it right here if that's okay. Okay. You said you don't use the net. I don't use it. Yeah, here at John Marine, we have a net delete. We have a what? A net delete bag ton. Yeah, I'll just hold it. Here you go. You need to, all these. Uh, that you need all. A bag. You forgot one of these. Use one of them little baggies out of something. Here you go. Taylor, you ready for? Where's my cords? So we are, we are gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and mount it right here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Let me make my wildscape box. I like it over there. Okay. You got all your on there. My net that don't kill. I forgot. What are we doing now? Uh, I remember fixed, this from the, our other video. Yeah, I'm fixing to add in the uh, second wildscape box power right there to our power block. Yeah, Mikey would hand me a cable, but he's too preoccupied, so. Playing with rods. Taylor, I gotta deal with Todd. I don't need you to. <laughs> Todd's enough. And he didn't even bring Waterburger. He stopped at Waterburger. We didn't bring this one. I did stop at Waterburger. I, I stopped there. Well, no, we like no, Waterburger. No, we're getting somewhere. But I, it would have been cold because I stopped there at 420, 425. Okay, so you did it early, early. I did early. Well, I had to get gas. And Waterburger was right there. And I was like, man, I'm just going to go ahead and get me something now. I'll let you slide. I'm so glad Yoder wasn't here when we did all this. Stuff. You Were you here that day? No, he was gone somewhere. Thank goodness, because like that's why everything got. Because if not, I would have had to really delete everything. Uh, well, no, and, and, he, and he calls me and he's like, "Y'all got Todd out of there?" And I said, "Yeah, like, and it, you know, it was it was late, you know, that day." And he, I was like, "Yeah, we just finished up." He said, "What took y'all so long?" I said, "You do realize we just did a step by step on this we whole boat." We did a step by step. <laughs> you didn't like the video? What? You probably didn't even watch the video, did you? Watch all of the time. My phone rings. It'll ring in a minute, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute, in a minute. Who was that? Oh, red wine when he was here yesterday. You're welcome. After. All right. So we're gonna tape up our terminal block. Good here. Got our other power for our live scope added. And now we're gonna let Yoder pull that and the transducer back to the box since he's been bored waiting on us back there with nothing to do for a few minutes. <clears throat> You haven't even got that black box installed yet. Don't mount it until I hook my wires up. Okay, gotcha. Get back, Dad. I'm just here to help. I don't really have to do anything, correct? I, now, I, I have a... Now we're going to put a new unit on. Mm -hmm. But I don't have to set any adjustments to that, do I? You'll tweak it. Tell you what I'll show you. Well, I took that unit from back there and put it on. Yeah. But it, I've only used it for the map. I haven't, I haven't like... Yeah. Like, half of your scope settings always, mm. like... 
wash over, you know, no matter what unit it's on. Okay, so it will? Yeah. Okay. And it'll all be in the network, so you're... Oh, yeah, yeah, so this is this is good, so people don't know that. Explain that. What, that some of your settings will wash over? Well, so, so before I have one unit, right, with live scope, and we did a whole video on the settings. So yeah. now, since we have a different live scope on it, it, we got perspective mode, but a whole different transducer onto a whole nother unit. Do I, am I gonna have to adjust settings for that? Or is it going to... So some of them are gonna stay over together. Okay. But the rest of them, like, and I'll show you which ones do this. It's like the, uh, your ranges, your TVG, your noise rejection, you know, some of that kind of stuff. Well, that's that's what's gonna stay between both graphs. That's what okay. But like now this this new live scope box, you know, for like the perspective transducer, it's strictly all gonna be different because it's all stock straight out of the box. Okay. So we'll go through and set that up, but it's gonna be for perspective, so it's a little bit different setup anyway. Okay. We got our deucer wire here, we got a power wire, and we have our net wire, which network wire which is coming from the back left graph so that's all you did correct you we we snaked in two wires from up here and one from back there yep yep okay. um you got your collars they got to be put on they're just snap collars you get the little black pieces off the end it already has a gasket on here so we don't have to use it these things snap together make sure that make sure they close all the way right there or they won't screw down tight so hook the, I don't like mounting my box till I hook my deucer up till I hook all my wires up which makes perfect sense because it's so hard to get to easy to get to you make sure you get a straight on and you don't and you're not trying to get up here at a bad angle and, and screw them in you also make sure you don't get anything cross threaded So one of the yeah one of the main reasons that I really like to get my wires plugged up before I mount the box is you can get your wires ran behind anything that you need to get behind. <clears throat> so in this case we're gonna run these behind the existing live scope box so that they don't stick out into the box and you don't catch them when you're getting things in and out of this box it's easier to hide and run wires when you do that so once you have these you have all three of them network deucer we'll get them plugged in these plastic ones you don't you just want to get them nice and firm you don't want to try to overdo them plastic will strip out then you can put your box up into place get it where you lock it if the camera sees it none of these wires are showing now they're not sticking out because they they're tucked up under here and out of the way nice and neat this don't have a hard bend on it where it's putting pressure on your wires it's just right there where it's supposed to be then all you have to do is mount your box Ashley so we got the network yeah. pulled back here for the second scope uh, because of the networks in the front being full you bring your second scope box back to one of your empty networks on the dash and just hook them all back up again and it networks through the system and he'll have perspective traditional if this guy back here fishing back here wants to watch he can watch on one of these screens back here that ain't happening right no I'm just playing Walk, that's just for video purposes only. That's for video. We did that the other. Yeah. Were you with me when we did it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you were with me. Okay. Oh, I couldn't remember. If you're ever swapping your graph around, or you're sending the unit in for warranty, make sure this dust cover is over here. It's crucial when you put your graph back on so you don't get a lot of dust, water, and everything else into the porch. New unit goes in the cradle. Sometimes they're a little tricky to get locked in. When it goes in there, it's got a little slack back and forth. 
you just kind of get it in the middle and if that goes in and locks easily it's in the right spot if this is ever hard to push down then you know your pins right here aren't lined up perfectly so put it in there give it a good wiggle go down like that make sure this locks all the way down we've had a couple of instances where guys get home and their grass in their seat or they get down to the groceries to the convenience store and the grass on the front deck and it's all because this right here appears to be locked but it's not locked till it goes underneath there don't pull on the graph because it can be false make sure you put your hand under here and this won't come up that's the way you know it's locked so basically that's it they've mounted both transducers on my shaft of my trolling motor they run all the cables they've done the black boxes hooked it up to power now he's just kind of cleaning up putting putting my graphs back on the boat